Each morning, the team at Marine Mammals of Maine is greeted by the cries of baby seals, 11 of them, all waiting to be fed. Spring is a busy time of year here, the only rehabilitation center for seals in Maine. It's pupping season, and up and down the coast, people are finding baby harbor seals that have been abandoned and need help. This time of year, it's like an all hands on deck to be able to care for these animals. And Linda Dowdy founded Marine Mammals of Maine in 2011. The end goal is to return all of these baby seals to the wild, where they belong. But first, they need help, and caring for them is a full-time job. Our first, they're getting tubed with like a milk matrix formula, and it's got a little bit of fish and milk matrix and vitamins and water, and it's like all blended up, and they get that about five times a day. Feeding the seals by tube rather than by bottle reduces human contact, which is important in wildlife rehabilitation. Fortunately, seals don't have the same gag reflex as humans. Caring for the baby seals is a cycle of feeding, cleaning, monitoring any health issues, and preparing for the next feeding. The typical workday is from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., with select animals requiring check-ins overnight as well. I don't know that you could do this kind of work without people who really cared and you know supported each other. So we're a very fortunate group, I think. <laughs> Some patients aren't strong enough to survive. It can be tough, it can be challenging, both for the individuals working with the animal to try to help them, and it's part of what we do, but it's not taken lightly. We know not every seal is going to survive that comes into our center, but we want to help the ones that need it as best we can. While we were at the center, a newly rescued patient came in for triage. Upon admission, the seal is immediately hydrated through an IV, then tested for common diseases. Staff record its body temperature, weight, and any signs of infection. Then, it's placed in a quiet enclosure to relax, with a rolled towel to suckle on. She crawled through someone's backyard and was just hanging out under an RV and has clearly not been feeding for a while. And that, that animal would die without intervention. And I just, I can't imagine us and the public having to just sit there and watch that happen and not be able to jump in and help. Roberta Linworth, a volunteer, collected the seal and transported her to the center. Without this organization, these seals would perish. And I love just being able to help with that. They're beautiful creatures. And to be present when any seal, but especially one that you've helped to get the help they need when they're released in the future, to be there, uh, takes your breath away. When Marine Mammals of Maine began rehabilitating seals in 2016, they only had room for two at a time. Now we can actually hold 15 at one time, which seems like, yay, we can help more animals, but there's still more animals that need care out there. Each year we keep trying to build it so that there'll be a year where we don't have to say no to an animal because of limiting rehab capacity in the Northeast region. After about four weeks of tube feeding, the seals are weaned onto fish. If these two seals continue to thrive, they'll be the first harbor seal patients to be released back into the ocean this summer. The organization has a multi-pronged mission. In addition to rescuing individual animals, they work to educate the public, largely through social media, and they contribute to ongoing marine research. At the University of Maine, researchers led by Christina Kamen use seal skin collected by Marine Mammals of Maine to learn more about seal populations along the coast. We're particularly interested in diving into questions about how their DNA makes them more or less susceptible to certain diseases that we know have, have caused large-scale die-offs in the populations in recent years. And we're also beginning to play in eDNA space where we are seeing to what extent can we get that genetic information um, simply from a, a bucket of water. PhD candidates Julia Sunderborg and Christina McCosker work under Kamen's mentorship on numerous research projects that involve seals. For me, I typically am looking for what is in the water. So I want to know, are there seals in this sample? Would that imply that there are seals in the area where the sample was taken? Are there also fish around that those seals might be eating? And kind of try to understand who is inhabiting the water based on who is leaving behind pieces of DNA. They're kind of like the canary in a coal mine where um, 
they will provide an early indication of something in the environment. So if we see a bunch of seals stranding on the beach, that could be an indication that something in the ocean, um, there's a threat that we need to watch out for. The Gulf of Maine sees four species of seals. The harbor seal and the gray seal live here year-round, while the other two, the harp and the hooded, are just seasonal visitors. In order to study the current seal population, it's important to have an understanding of the history of seals in this area, Kamen said. There's evidence that just Seals were abundant in Maine's history, even before it was the state of Maine. There's evidence that the uh, Native American peoples who lived along the coast of Maine, or what is now Maine, um, hunted seals. And so we see evidence of that in the archaeological record. The next step of where we have documentation comes from the early European explorers. So late 1400s, early 1500s, we see the Europeans arrive and they write in their ship logs about shores that are covered with seals. From the late 1800s to the mid-1900s, Massachusetts, Maine, and Atlantic Canada had government-financed bounties on seals because they were seen as competition for local fishermen. And we think that something like in the ballpark of 100,000 seals were probably killed during that time frame. In 1972, the U.S. Marine Mammal Protection Act made it illegal to kill seals, and Maine's seal population began to recover. And so at that point, the bounties were no longer in place. The harbor seal population started recovering. We saw really nice growth starting in the 1970s through the sort of early 2000s, and then that population may be starting to level off. Gray seals started recovering later, uh, but from about the 1990s to today, their population has been exponentially growing and it's continuing to grow. Let's fast forward a month or so. Today is the big day. The two seals we watch being fed fish at the rehabilitation center are being released back into the wild. Once they start to come out and be released, um, just give them their space and not try to go after them in the water or anything. They may hang around for the day. They may play with the seaweed. They just are going to be exploring because this is, you know, they're young, they're little juveniles, and they're out in the wild and being free um, for the first time in a long time. So we want to give them a good send off. On a private beach, a group of supporters gather to witness the event. We really are doing around the clock care for them. And it's really, really special to be able to see them released because it's kind of all this hard work paid off. It might cause a few tears while I'm wearing sunglasses today. The seals are tagged, so if spotted in the wild, they can be identified. It was amazing. I mean, I feel like it's, it's a little bittersweet. You want this outcome. You want them to be able to have the second chance to go home. Um, this is where they belong, and this is where we want them to thrive. But at the same time, you put so much work and effort into like caring for them and nurturing them that it's a little sad when you see them leave. You're like, I'll miss you a little bit. <laughs> I hope to honestly never see them again, but in the best way. I just want them to be able to live their life now and get that second chance to really enjoy it that they deserve. I feel relieved. I want to make sure that they still, they'll take them a little bit to kind of get acquainted with their surroundings, but we still have more animals to care for at our center, so it's on to the next <laughs> round of patients that we have. 